Welcome to the Miata Kingdom, Miata Mecca. Today's episode is going to be all about convertible top latches. So, your name might be on the title. It might be parked in your garage, but I'm the owner because I'm the king of Miatas. Hey, what are we waiting for? Let's get down to the shop and get started. Welcome everybody to the Miata Kingdom, Miata Mecca. And it's great to have you all here. And today we're going to talk about all about convertible top latches. This is an important subject because a new pair of latches will cost you anywhere from $260 to $340. And that's up there with the washing machine price. So there's a real issue about these latches and actually these latches are starting to fail. Now we're going to be talking about the latches from 1990 to 05. And the reason they fail is they fail to make a positive lock. Okay, on the latch there's actually a, a button. And the button locks the latch into place so it won't open. And, it's, and, and the latch is starting to fail and the latch can actually flop open. And it can actually happen you know, while you're driving the car. The danger is, of course, the latch snapping open at speed and the convertible top flying back while you're going down the highway. We've had reports of the top tearing, bending the frame, and breaking the rear window with the latch failure. So now, instead of buying $340 worth of latches, you're spending $1,000 on a convertible top, a frame, and some new latches. So the expense is just starting to snowball with this latch problem. My incident happened years ago as a teenager. Me and my girlfriend, Millie, were at speed going down the highway in my Austin Healey 3000. And I thought I was back at the end of the movie Easy Rider. <laughs> it sounded like a shotgun blast, and then it was bright light. I thought I was dead. Nope. But that top never closed right again, and I never did get lucky with Millie. <laughs> now, there's someone here to demonstrate the latch snapping open. Oh, no! Not Mr. Bill! No! No! and suffer the consequences like Mr. Bill did here. Remember I said most of the latches are failing. But the initial latch, and these are the shiny latches, that's the first six months of production of the Mazda Miata. So that's that 89 car, you know, the, what they call the very early car. It had shiny latches and there were other things different on the car. The differential was it had a smooth face, it wasn't thin, it didn't have the fins on it for cooling. And these shiny latches are still good. They've lasted the test of time. They haven't failed. They still latch. They still lock. Let's talk about the history of the latches. This is the shiny latch. This was the original latch. We're going to call that original car with the shiny latches and the smooth differential. It doesn't have fins on it, cooling fins on it. We're going to call that the 89 car. This is the first production, the six months first production. The next latch that was available was from 90 through 97. You can see the little difference in them. They're a satin finish, and they spell unlock on the unlock button. These latches have started to fail now after 20 years. The next latches that were, came along were the 99 to 02 latches, and there was no unlock on the lock button, so you can see that there was no printing on there. And these latches, have, we've seen these latches fail at 60 to 80,000 miles. Now the cars are getting 200,000 miles on and the latches have really gone bad. The next production run of the latches was a little different and that was the 03 to 05 latch. Now this latch was different because it actually used what they call a blunt latch cap. 
So there was a difference in the latch caps. This cap, this one used a blunt latch cap. And then the ones before it, the 99, so these are the two latches. 89 to 02 latch uses the pointy latch cap. And that's this latch cap right here. You can see the pointed latch cap. And then the 03 to 05 uses the blunt latch cap. And you can see the difference in latch, cap, latch caps. Now the latches and the catches, the catches are the piece that goes with it, are also different. So the pointy latch cap goes in a smaller opening and the blunt has a larger opening. So you have to have a match set of these. You can't interchange them. The last latch we'll look at is a hard top side latch and that's this latch right here. And it's different. It has three screws that hold it in place and it goes on the B pillar there right by the seat belt. And it also uses the pointy latch cap. Then there's the screws that hold down the latches. The shiny latches, the early latches, used a Phillips type of screw. And that takes a number three Phillips bit. Number three Phillips bit. You always want to use the proper size Phillips bit. And then they moved on to a Torx bit. You can see a Torx bit now. And that's a number 40. That's a number 40 Torx bit. And that's what fits that, a number 40 Torx bit. The catches themselves, the early catches are what we call a closed catch. The, the holes were, were actually separated by a, by a barrier there. Then they moved on to an open hole catch. You can see the open holes. You can see one of the catches is always slotted, so it has some movement left and right. And that's to make adjustments on the top. We'll look at top adjustments later. The hard top catches are different. And this is the hard top catch on the side, the side latches. They're by the seat belt. And there's a difference in those too. You can see this is the hard top and this is the convertible top. The header for the convertible top frame and the hard top side latch. You can see the difference in here. This latch, if you use this catch, it the, uh, it sits too low and it won't hold the convertible top correctly. So you need a proper side hardtop catch when you put a hardtop on your car. So I wondered, what's the difference between these latches and the other latches that came after it? One way to tell how the latches change is to see how dense the metal is and see you know, how did they change? What, what changed in the latches to make them fail so soon? So can I get a volunteer? How about Mr. Bill? No, Mr. Bill, I'm sorry, you're trapped. Martha's going to help us. Okay, Martha. What you're going to do is watch the scale, and when we weigh a latch, then come on over here and write down the weight of the latch for me on the piece of paper. Okay, we're going to... And essentially, you can come later and look at the latches, but they all are similar. I mean, they're not one is thicker in one place or not, but they've all been cast the same in the same mold. And you'll see, you know what I'm talking about. So let's weigh the first one. Does it come up? Uh, there's one way over here, one, seven point zero. Okay, so that would be one pound, one LB, and seven, what is it? Seven point one ounces. And then next latch. Now this is uh, going to be the 90 through 97 latch. 1.63. One pound, 6.3 ounces. Next latch is going to be that 99 to 02. 1.53. 1.53. And then we're going to have that blunt latch, and that's that 03 through 05. 
1.52. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give a hand. Martha. <laughs> so you can see what happened to the election. Now, first I thought, oh, well, what happened? Did they start making the pins out of alloy? What, what's the difference? So I used a magnet and I went through, well, the latches, all the latches are alloy and all the pins, the pins are steel, they're all magnetic, they're all alike. What was the difference? As we can now see by our measurement, by weighing the latches, that the difference was in the alloy mix. As the latches got lighter and lighter, they, they were more prone to failure. Next, let's take a look at how they failed and how the latches work. The casting is what fails. The casting and the, and the clasp, you know, the piece that folds down the clasp. What happens is the holes in, the, in these pieces get elongated and then the latch becomes kind of like a, a wet noodle. When they're new, a good latch is like a, a chain jack. You know, on a trailer that you use a chain jack to bring two chains together? And it's like that. It goes over center. And when it goes over center, then it actually uses the tension of the pull to hold it closed. So we're going to demonstrate a chain jack right now. So we'll see how these latches work and how they fail. I need two big, strong guys to grab onto two chains for me. Yeah, right there. There we go. So give it a tug. Pull them apart. So what happens is the latch comes over center. You see it's going to come over center. When it comes over center, then you can't pull it apart. Can you guys pull it apart? No. The harder you pull, the more it creates tension on it. So, the, so that's how the latch works. Comes over center. And you can feel it when you latch it. You feel it come over center and latch. So when you pull it, you pull against it, and then it goes. It releases. So that's how it works. Thanks, guys. So now, how are we going to fix these latches? <laughs> how are we going to fix these latches? Because we need to buy a washing machine. Or we would like a new flat screen TV. It's either the latches, a washing machine, or a flat screen TV. Well, the simple fixes are always the best. We picked up a fix from YouTube, and, a fellow, and we want to thank, say thank you to a fellow named Missane One. The repair is to pin the clasp. What we do is create a pin in the clasp, and when it closes the pin, then again strike the lock button so it can't open up. And I might have done that to some of your cars already. Generally, we do it when we put on a convertible top. We modify all the latches so that people don't have a problem with the top. One of the common questions that's asked about the latches is, how interchangeable are the latches? What latches fit what? Well, the shiny latch, that's that 89, the early car, the 89 latch, can be used all the way up to the 02 latch. In 03, they changed the latches with that blunt cap, so the cap doesn't fit. So 03 through 05 is unique because of that blunt latch cap. But the early latch can fit all the way up to 2002. You could always retrofit any latch into any car if you use the same catch with a corresponding latch. All of our latches wouldn't be complete unless we get inside your Miata and help you adjust the latches. So we're going to go through the technique of how to adjust the latches in your Mazda Miata. So let's, let's get into a car and adjust the latches. You can see the driver's latch on the left side of the car on the driver's side. And this latch still has a good function. It, it won't open up. You have to release the button to open it up. So what we're going to do is remove the latches. Now there might be a couple issues when you go to remove the latches on the car. The one, one problem is that you may have a, a strip screw 
You can see somebody's worked this screw pretty hard and it's stripped. So a Phillips screwdriver won't take that screw out anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to slot that screw to be able to take it out with a, a flathead screwdriver. The other screw, and on the hard tops especially, is actually locked tight and into place. And to remove that screw, we're going to use a soldering iron to warm up the screw to release the Loctite. The key to releasing Loctite is heat. The latch on the passenger side is one of those bad latches. It won't, it won't, it's floppy. So it needs that posi latch fix. So we need to put the posi latch fix on this one. That's what we're talking about. And that's that, that uh, kit we're going to sell on eBay with video instructions. And we'll talk about that later after this instructional video. So we're going to get both latches off. You can see that both latches actually need their latch cap. That's why we have to remove them. The latch cap, the part that the plastic part that is actually enters the catch, is actually broken on both the latches. And that's a common problem. The first thing we're going to do is remove that strip screw. So I'm going to actually cut a groove in the screw head so we can use a flat blade screwdriver to remove it. To do that, I'm going to either use a Dremel, or I have a high-speed drill, a 20,000 RPM drill. We're going to get in there, and see, we're just going to make a cut right in the center. Once we do that, now we can use a flat blade screwdriver and be able to remove the screw. There we go. So if you've got a strip screw, well, this is on a latch, but any screw. You can create a strip Phillips screw and you can slot it and turn it into a flat blade screw and remove it. So that's how it's done. When you go to remove the screw that's Loctited in, you're going to use heat and we'll use that soldering iron. So what you want to do is use a soldering iron and we've actually modified the tip of this iron. And what you're going to do is put the tip of the iron right in the head of the screw. Now you can use a soldering gun, you know, or a soldering iron, but it takes time. So I suggest that when you do this, you actually set up a timer. And you want to give it maybe a couple minutes before you actually try to turn the screw. So we'll run it for a couple minutes, you know, and then we'll show you how to get that screw out. Because you're not going to use a regular screwdriver, you're going to set it up so you can put a lot of torque and pressure on the screw because you don't want to strip the screw out like the other screw was. It's been a couple minutes now and you know it's going to take some while to transfer the heat from the soldering iron or soldering gun into the screw and then release that Loctite that's holding the thread locker that's holding it in there. So we're going to use the T-bar. So we're putting in the screw and when we put in the screw then we're going to hold pressure, we're going to push down on it as hard as we can and then crank on it to release the screw. That's one method. If you don't have a T-bar, there's another way. And that way is you use a number three Phillips tip on an extension with a ratchet. Same thing, you're going to set it up in there and when you do it, you're going to actually put a lot of pressure again on the screw and then use the ratchet to crank it out. So let's see if we can start moving it out. Oh, it's starting to break loose. I can feel it. Feel it. I can feel it breaking loose. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, now it's getting real tight again. I'm going to have to warm it up again. So this process is going to take some time. So you're going to heat, turn it out, turn it back in, heat, turn it out, turn it back in. Eventually you'll be able to remove the screw. Let's get the latches off now, and then we'll put on the latch caps, put them back on the car, and then adjust the, adjust the uh, latches on the, on the soft top with the new latch caps. Once we're in the car, and we've got our tools on our lap and we're ready to go, the first step what we're going to do is we're going to loosen up the catches on both sides. By loosening up the catches, we'll allow the catches to actually center themselves. Now we're going to take a look. There's actually a lock here on this. This is a turnbuckle. It's like your mom's clothesline. If you unscrew it, it gets longer. If you screw it tighter, it gets shorter. So you 
Unscrewing it opens it up. Let's take a look at it and see how it works. So if I unscrew it, it's going to get longer. It's starting to get longer, longer, longer. Better be looser, looser, looser on the latch, on the adjustment. Shorten it up, turning it in, shortens it up. We're going to start with the thread not protruding back in there. We're going to start right there. Now when you close it, you have to have this centered with the, the lock. That lock has to come over, so you have to have the flats. Once you got that done, then I'm going to close this one. I'm going to feel where it is. Close it. Now I'm going to tighten up the catches. So I'm going to tighten the catches. Now the important thing is right here on this edge, right in here, that's where the wind leak is. So if, if it closes and there's no gap, I can see a gap when it's open, if it closes and there's no gap, it doesn't have to be super tight. It has to just latch and close and seal this gap right in through here. Once we've got that done, we can tighten up and make sure the visors are, screws are tight. So if we've got a droopy visor, we're going to use that soft hammer. We're going to take the, the visor, the droopy visor, and we're going to actually strike the visor right here. and knock it back into place. It actually slides down. That's why they said they come down. You have to use a soft hammer, hammer, a rubber mallet, and then knock it into place. Hey, I think that's going to take care of us. Have a great day. And I think maybe time for lunch. And Good after lunch... Now, after lunch, we have a real heartbreaker, and I mean, it's going to grab you by the throat and choke you, and your heart's going to go up, and we've got an engine over here we're going to look at, and this car here, we bought this car from a gentleman, he said, I got a lifter noise, and he brought the car in, I said, oh my God, that's not a lifter noise, that's a connecting rod knock, okay, and sure enough, that engine is ready to blow up. We're going to diagnose the noise, the connecting rod knock, and then we're going to put it up in the air, and Mr. Bill is going to be involved because we're going to rip that baby up until the rods come out the engine. So that's what we'll do after lunch. How's that sound? Stick around. All right, so stick around. All right. We hope you have enjoyed this episode all about Mazda Miata convertible top latches. Now it's time to show you how to purchase that Posi latch fix so you can repair those latches at home by yourself. I'd like to show you how to navigate our eBay store, Miata Mecca. So let's take a look at a computer screen now. The first thing you want to do is find ebay.com on your computer screen. And once you get to that page, the main page, you're going to type in Miata Mecca Posi Latch Fix. And then we're going to use the search engine to see what we find here. And it brings up the two Posi Latch Fix kits. The first one here is the 90 through 02. The one below it is the 0 through through 05. Now we're working on an early car, so we're going to click on this one. Here's the Buy It Now. This is where you're going to click to actually purchase the item. Now over here on the right, this is how you get into our store, our main store. So you can see all our categories. That's our main store, Miata Mecca. Now this item comes free shipping and it comes priority mail, so it comes to you right away. If you go over to the picture, you can click on the picture and you can get some blow up pictures of the kit. And if we scroll down, we'll get a description of the kit. And here's one. When you purchase an instruction, when you purchase an instructional video, will be sent to your PayPal email address. 
And this video is about 10 minutes long and it shows you the details how to fix your floppy latches. Now let's go into our store over here. You can see our stores over here and we go into, let's go into, let's say, oh, uh, fuel pumps and tanks. Let's take a look at that. And we got 23 results for fuel pumps and tanks. We can take a look at those and there's your gaskets and whatnot. So now we can see our whole eBay stores right here. So let's say we want drain and fill plugs. Well, here's our drain and fill plugs. We got 13 items in there. We got the crush washers in there. Hey, thanks a lot for taking a look at our store, Miata Mecca. We hope that was helpful to you to be able to find that posi latch fix in our eBay store, Miata Mecca. Now, before we leave, I'd like to invite the San Diego Miata Club to come in and say goodbye with me. Hey, come on in, guys. Around the king. Come on, there. He's gonna, it feels like it's going to pop off. He's going to run for president next time. He's a, he's a, he's a hey, he's he's gonna run for president? Okay, I'll get back. Who's taking the picture? I'll take it. No, no. no. Let's get somebody else. There's a, yeah. Get the yeah. Okay, get all the cameras to Terry. her. She'll take pictures. Yeah. You can eat that Have here. Have a seat. <laughs> Barbara? Ladies? Yeah, tell them what you want for Christmas. Come on, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> get Eleanor in here. for Christmas. We'll get, Terry, we'll get Terry. Ronnie to come next time. <laughs> uh -oh. Wait, are they going to be able to see Eleanor? It may, maybe too heavy. You get in here. Wait, wait, wait. I don't have a crown. Right there. He Could wants you take our picture of our event staff? Your crown is right there. Ian, 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 Ian will take comes. the picture. Ian, Ian, Ian Mandy, will take the picture. Mandy, get over there. And Thanks, Mandy, Ian. And Brian. And he's Greg has to have the picture. Yeah, you're going to feel it. Oh, funny. Okay. Oh, funny. Yeah, that's good. Okay.